Hi, welcome to MediClass. On this channel, we help you understand the concepts in dental, medical and related health science subjects. This in turn will help you develop a sound knowledge of the subject and will help you apply better in the health science profession. Today, we learn about tooth nomenclature. The first step in understanding anatomy of tooth is to learn the nomenclature. Now, what is mandible? Mandible is the lower jaw and contains mandibular teeth. And this is maxilla, which refers to the upper jaw and contains maxillary teeth. Do you know how many set of teeth a person has in his lifetime? A person has two set of teeth, the deciduous teeth and the permanent teeth. Deciduous teeth are 20 in number and permanent teeth are 32 in number. The deciduous dentition starts erupting at the age of 6 months up to the span of 2.5 years. The deciduous teeth remain intact until the age of 6 years. After this, the permanent teeth eruption initiates and continues till the age of 13 years, except for the third molars, which erupt between the age of 18 to 25 years. Let's look into the dental formula of the deciduous teeth. A child contains 20 milk teeth. Now let's consider this photo which resembles the upper jaw. This half portion has two incisors, one canine and two molars. So one jaw contains 10 teeth and both the jaws together contain 20 teeth. Moving on to the dental formula of the permanent teeth. Adults have 32 permanent teeth. Two incisors, one canine, two premolars and three molars. Did you notice any difference in the total number of deciduous and the permanent teeth? Well, I'm sure you did. The premolars and the third molars are not present in the deciduous dentition. Now we move on to tooth numbering systems. There are three tooth numbering systems that have been followed. First is the palmer zygmondi notation system. Second is Federation Dentaire International Notation System. And third is Universal Notation System. Let's start with palmer zygmondi notation system. Now these are the two jaws, the upper and the lower jaw, and are divided into four quadrants. That is one, two, three, and four. The deciduous teeth are represented by alphabets. In this photo, you can see it has been divided into four quadrants, and every quadrant starts from A and ends at E. A is central incisor, B is lateral incisor, C is canine, D is first molar and E is second molar. So total there are 20 teeth as you can see in this photo as well. Moving on to the permanent teeth. The permanent teeth are represented with numericals that is 1 to 8. So here again we divide this into the four quadrants. Every quadrant starts with 1 and ends with 8. So 1 is central incisor, 2 is lateral incisor, 3 is canine, 4 is first premolar, 5 is second premolar, 6 is first molar, 7 is second molar and 8 is third molar. Moving on to certain examples, the primary lower right first molar is represented with an alphabet because it's primary tooth. So here it goes, it's a D and this sign represents the lower right quadrant. Next is the permanent upper left canine. Now as we know the permanent teeth are represented with numbers. So this is 3 and this symbol is upper left quadrant. Let's look into certain advantages and disadvantages of this system. Advantages are it is simple to use and quadrant symbols are same for both the primary and the permanent dentition. Disadvantages are the symbolic system is generally incompatible with the computer and other processing systems. It is difficult to use the system for verbal communication. Now next we move on to the universal notation system. In universal notation system, the deciduous teeth are represented by alphabets. But here, every deciduous teeth has a specific alphabet given to it. It starts from A that is upper right second molar, goes to J that is upper left second molar, goes down to K that is the lower left quadrant and then it moves on to T that is second molar of the right lower quadrant. All the teeth are represented with specific alphabets. Moving on to the permanent teeth. In permanent teeth every tooth has a specific number. 
It starts from 1, that is the upper third molar, and goes to 16, that is the upper left third molar, goes down to 17 in the lower quadrant, that's lower third molar, and then goes to 32, that is lower right third molar. So this is how it follows the path. Let's move on to the examples now. The primary upper left canine. It has a specific alphabet that is H. And the primary right central incisor, it has a specific number that is number 8. The advantages of this system. It's compatible with computers and it can be communicated verbally. Disadvantages. It's difficult to visualize graphically and it's difficult to memorize as each tooth has a different alphabet or the number. This needs a lot of practice. Moving on to the third system, that is the Federation Dentier International Notation System, which started to be followed in 1970. In this system, every quadrant has specific number. 5 is the upper right quadrant, 6 is the upper left quadrant, 7 is the lower left quadrant and 8 is the lower right quadrant. Now for example, let's focus on this number 5-1. 5 represents the quadrant, that is the upper right quadrant, and 1 represents the number of tooth, that is the central incisor. As you can see in this photo, again we have divided this into 4 quadrants, and it starts from 5-1 to 5-5, 6-1 six, to 6-5, 7-1 to 7-5, and 8-1 to 8-5. So total teeth are 20. Moving on to the permanent dentition. In this, the quadrant numbers are different. 1 is the upper right quadrant. 2 is the upper left quadrant. 3 is the lower left quadrant. And 4 is the lower right quadrant. Again, for example, let's take 4, 8. 4 stands for the lower right quadrant. And 8 stands for the number of 2, that is the third molar. So this is the lower right third molar. Now what are the examples? The permanent upper right second molar is 1, 7 because the upper right quadrant is represented by number 1 and the second molar is represented by number 7. Same goes with the primary lower left canine that is 7, 3. 7 is the quadrant number and 3 is the tooth number. Now what are the advantages of this system? It is internationally followed system. It is compatible with the computer. It can be communicated verbally and it helps to prevent when differentiating between the right and the left sides of the mouth and the upper and lower dental arches. So why do we need this tooth notation systems? It is just basically to provide the information regarding a specific tooth. It is easier to communicate among the practitioners and recording the data. And the FDI is the universally accepted tooth notation system. Now to summarize what all we learned in this video. First we learned the basic nomenclature of the tooth, that's the maxillary and the mandibular teeth. Then we learned the dental formulas, the decidus and the permanent teeth. Then we went through the three notation systems and their advantages and disadvantages, that is universal, palmer zygmondi and FDI. The FDI is highlighted as we know that it is universally accepted system. We also have a PDF for you guys which has MCQs related to this topic in the description section. Thanks for watching the video. We hope you liked it and if you do, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for the updates regarding new videos. See you in the next video. Till then, stay healthy and have an amazing week.